All right, so you purchased the Ram 3500 from Frank Brazel, I guess it's pronounced. Uh, and now you want to put a nice skin on it. Well, let's create a skin, shall we? I'm going to put links in the description to everything, too, in case you should need it. Let's get into it. All right, so you open the template for the truck that came with it. And what the first thing you want to do is go down there to your layers, create another layer. Now, I'm using paint.net. Uh, you might be using GIMP or whatever. So, anyway, I create another layer to drag it down underneath the truck template. And I'm going to flood fill it with white. Now, I want my truck to be white. And of course, when we're in uh, Mod Studio 2, we're probably going to make it metallic. But anyway, we're going to add another layer for graphics. And then we're going to want to go retrieve our graphics. So that's the truck template layer. We've got a color layer beneath it. And now we've got a graphics layer that's setting on top because we want it to show on the on the truck template as we're designing here and I'm going to my rodeo folder here so I can get some some good horse stuff we're gonna get the silhouette that I like to use on my trucks and trailers and we're gonna edit select all edit copy We flip back over to our truck. We're still on that graphics layer there. So what we're going to do is edit, paste. Now we just want to drag it into place. Some that looks decent. We're going to start on the driver's side. And uh, we're going to resize this a bit and get her to fit on the truck. And I think this is going to look the best up right there. Let's make sure we got it fit. Kind of try to miss the door handles a little bit. If you look down there, you'll see the bounding box size for that particular uh, graphic, what we reduced it to. What I do is write that down, and then I go back to my image. And the first thing I want to do is flip it vertically. Now, we don't need to flip it horizontally just vertical and then we're going to resize it to the size that was designated in that bounding box if you remember back here that bounding box size and flip back and we're going to resize it and then once we've resized it then we'll um get this resized right All right, got it resized. We're going to edit, select all, edit, copy, go back to our truck, edit, paste. And there, it's the same size as the other side. So we'll just drag it in place. And that's going to be accurate, you know, which horse is in the front and which is in the back. Same side to side, mirrored side to side, I guess you could say. And I deselect it. And then I'm going to, what I'm going to do now is rename this layer. You could just double click on the layer or rename it Horseman or something. And then we'll slide, we'll take that opacity slider there and drag it down because we just want it to be a silhouette. Basically, if I want to put other graphics on top of it, that kind of thing, I just want it to be sort of a background layer, if you will. We'll add another layer. Now we can put graphics over that without interfering with it. You know what I'm saying? Because the way that layers work in here is if you have a layer of graphics and you start combining a bunch of them on the same layer, if they have a transparency to them, 
one transparency can overlap the other graphic and cause some issues or ghosting or actually if it's overlapping enough it'll make areas of the graphic disappear so we don't want that what we want to do is create another layer and then i've got my graphic here for my ranch circle c ranch and we'll just reduce that down and thinking about maybe putting it on the driver's door i don't know no nah. no nah, that takes up too much space all right we'll put it back here on the quarter panel of the bed and uh then we want to do the same thing here we want to see what size bounding box we've created uh that'll that'll tell us what size we need to make that graphic so we can duplicate it on the other side now this particular sign has text so we're going to need to uh flip it twice I wrote down the uh, the size that I need it to be, so I'm just going to go ahead and resize it first thing off the bat and make it easier. Resize it, and we'll flip it. Like I said, I have to flip it vertically, but now that it's got text in it, we'll have to flip it horizontally so that you can still read it. And then we'll edit, select all, edit, copy and we'll edit paste on the truck now they're the same size we'll just drag it back over here on that rear quarter try to place it about the same place as the other side all right looks cool now on this particular truck what i was wanting to do um i think we're going to add another uh, sort of logo for uh prca professional rodeo association so we'll um we'll grab that logo and pretty much the same same deal there we're gonna uh open it up and we're gonna edit select all edit copy and i think there's some shortcut keys that's um there on the menu when you pull it down so if you can memorize all those you might just be able to use shortcut keys but this is how i do it keeps me sane and then we're going to paste that in and then we're going to drag it where we want it i think we'll put this on the rear quarter and we'll reduce it down again drag it over there I know it looks tiny, but it's going to look big in world when you get it on your truck in the ATS. It's going to look mighty fine. But uh, we'll write down those uh, bounding box size so we've got it handy. Uh, but I think what I'm going to do here, I want it on the hood as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and paste another one. And that's the same size as it was. I don't have to resize it twice. But we'll just turn that 90 degrees or close to it anyway uh, drag it into place and then we'll resize it just a little bit make sure it fits right on that hood good and uh, and don't forget I've got the bounding size for the other graphic the uh, rear fender graphic I've got that written down. So now we'll go back there and we'll change this one up and we're just going to resize it right quick just like we did the other one. Real simple. And I'm not affecting my original graphics because I'm not going to save any of these changes. This is just for what we're working with now. So what we're going to do here is we're going to flip it, flip it again vertical and horizontal and we'll select all copy again and then we'll paste it over here stick it on that rear fender now on this one i want to do something a little different and i want to add some some uh some mud 
I want to make it look like this truck's been out in the field, you know. So let's get into that next. All right, we're going to want to add another layer and then we're going to go shopping. And I, um, I don't think I have any mud <laughs> in here. So probably what I'm going to want to do is, is go shopping online. We'll just go look for PNG. Let me just look here real quick. Yeah, I don't see anything usable. Let's go online and we're just going to look for PNG mud. See what comes up. <laughs> I'm sure we could find some splashing mud or something. I'm really wanting to find something kind of flat so it looks right on the truck, but not sure about that. We'll just have to get what we can get. I find a lot of graphics for trucks online. Some of them I make myself, but for the most part, I can go to a PNG site, find just what I need.
All right, so we've gotten our mud graphics. Now we'll get them into the paint.net. And then we'll do the usual. We'll do the uh, select all copy. We're on a new layer now, so this will be above everything else. Our other graphics and base color and all that stuff. So we'll just. Uh, Lather, rinse, repeat here. <laughs> Adding another layer.
All right, so we've got our graphics all done up like we like them. So we're going to go over here to our layers area. We're going to turn off the truck layer or delete it, whichever one you choose. But the truck needs to disappear. Otherwise, it'll show up on the truck. Then we're going to save it. And just, I'm going to go in here and name it, whatever. <clears throat> this is going to be the skin that goes on in Mod Studio 2. I'm change, save it as PNG. And there you go. Flatten the layers. <clears throat> and there we go. Notice I didn't save any of the changes to the uh, graphics that I used. So they'll remain the same. We'll open MS2. <clears throat> Yeah, what we want to do is want to start a new project, ATS, of course. We've got our, it starts our manifest file in there. And then what we want to do is uh, we want to create a new template, it says. And then we'll say simple truck skin. We'll go to the truck skin and we'll select the Dodge. Now, that said, I need to tell you that if you don't have this in your Mod Studio 2, you can do that one of two ways. One is to use the truck mod, and I'll put a card above, or uh, Frank already provides the XML, just drop it in Documents, Mod Studio 2 User Vehicles, and that will place that in your Mod Studio 2. That's the easiest way to do it. Um, anyway, if you don't have that XML file for some reason, you can use the, uh, the mod itself, and like I said, the card up above there will take you to a video that shows you how to do that. Go in here and name your skin, and it's going to be a paint job. And I'm just going to use the default stuff as far as icons are concerned. And we'll just put something in the description so we know what it is down the line. And pretty simple stuff, really. And what we're going to do is go, that's our manifest done. So we go to our skin, select the dodge. Next tab, we name it, put a price on it, and put your minimum level purchase it I always put a hundred dollars and minimum level one something like that I always try to reduce this down to where it's just bare white for the base color and we're gonna drag and drop our um, here we go drag and drop our our PNG that we just created in paint.net and that will show up right there <clears throat> then what you want to do is go to the next tab and we're just going to use the default as I said and then I'm going to choose metallic colors because I want to be able to change the color of it and then you want to save it I always save it before I try to export it I've noticed that sometimes when I haven't saved it, I encounter problems with the export. So I always save it first, and then I export it. 
name it, whatever the mod name is going to be, because this is going to be your SCS file that goes in your mod folder. So we'll name it and then Sorry, that was the MS2 file. This is the, uh, the export here. This is going to be your SS file. There we go. So exporting. Once the export's complete, click on Show in Folder. That'll show you your mod. Select it, of course, just like normal. Right click, copy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open a new Explorer window here file window and then open our mod folder right click and paste and now it's in there and you just want to go down through and make sure that you have your Frank's uh, RAM 3500 in there which you should already I guess if you've been using it but uh, it's there we've confirmed it so now we're going to close our folders close our mod studio 2 I'll go ahead and close some more stuff that I have open here to make sure that uh, that I have clean and clear memory for opening American Truck Simulator. Alright, so let's open that American Truck Simulator. And through the magic of video editing, we're able to open it ultra fast. Go to your mods make it active and then want to decrease the priority drop it down in and amongst your other paint jobs and I'm not going into mod order here uh, you have your own struggles with that I'm sure but I just make sure it's in and amongst my other uh, paint jobs <coughs> which are right in there somewhere <laughs> I'm checking see where I have my Franks Dodge it should be right there yeah in and amongst my other trucks <clears throat> now we'll continue going into the game and we'll go to the truck dealer Open the access mod dealer, go to the Dodge, customize it, and speed it up a little bit here for you while I do the, now I forgot to change the steering wheel here, so I have to go back and do that later. <laughs> anyway, there's the paint, there's what the paint looks like on there, pretty cool. And I didn't check it, but I, it should look equally well on either the straight side or the dually. Either one. Dually just has a little more contour to it. <clears throat> the only thing I didn't do, I, you'll notice when I do the template, I didn't do the uh, the bedsides that have the, um, the opening toolboxes on top of the fenders. I knew I wasn't going to use that, so uh, I didn't bother. But uh, if you know you're going to use it, the same paint for several different styles of truck, you may want to duplicate what you did on the regular bed sides and do it on those with the opening toolboxes. <clears throat> that will ensure that you have it all over the place <clears throat> for which, whichever body style you choose. And if you know you're going to be running a wrecker or whatever, you just mess with the cab part 
you don't even mess with the the bed. So <clears throat> anyway, this is what I've discovered so far. I don't know everything about the template uh, that came with this. This is just my first little splat at it, and I thought I'd make a tutorial while I was doing it in case anyone was interested. So as you can see, I'm at the Schulenberg Farms, and that's my yard. So I'm going to go into the repair shop and change that steering wheel. It's not a bad color. It's just I made the interior black, so it doesn't really <laughs> match the rest of the interior. So, and I'm sorry I'm losing my voice this evening, so bear with me. I apologize in advance. This is our Schulenburg, Texas farm from Matt VT Yards, in case you're interested. And we'll just go in there quick and fix this steering wheel business. I didn't even really look at interior options before, so there we go. We changed it. And that looks fine to me, so let's get out on the farm. We're going to drive around a little bit, and since we did a muddy paint job, we're going to go to the creek bottom and pretend like we're really making it muddy. <laughs> and besides that, I want some photo opportunities, so I, that's my ulterior motive for driving over there. And you get to hear some engine sounds and whatnot. All right, here we are at the creek bottom, and uh, if you're hanging with me this long, and I appreciate you hanging out with me. Uh, just having some fun out here, but uh, here we can uh, sort of 
imitate the fact that we might be getting this thing muddy. It got a little squirrely on the way over here. I, I got into the uh, accelerator pedal a little bit too much going around some of those corners. But uh, that, that gravel's awful loose out here on the farm. But yeah, yeah, we can do some photo ops. Thanks for watching, everybody. And uh, don't forget to subscribe for future videos there. Take care.